In some ways, the most difficult negotiation was the very first trip that I led to North Korea. It was a multinational delegation with Americans, South Koreans, and Japanese. And for obvious reasons, uh, everybody was very nervous. Uh, North Korea is the world's most secretive country on the face of the planet. Uh, it's true today, it was certainly true 15 years ago. And uh, we had to go in via Beijing. Um, we were surrounded at all times by a, a large number of security officials to make sure that we didn't wander off and have any contact with the North Korean people. And so the stress level, the tension of just that environment was unlike any other type of negotiation I've been part of. Uh, with Northern Ireland, um, the most difficult negotiations uh, took place with uh, both the political parties uh, in Northern Ireland trying to get uh, one of them, Sinn Féin, uh, to support uh, policing and the rule of law and trying to get the other, the Democratic Unionist Party, the DUP, uh, to recognize that important changes were taking place and that they needed to stand up together with Sinn Féin to form a local government. And those got quite heated at times, quite acrimonious. Um, the fact that a number of the Sinn Féin officials were former members of the IRA, uh, formerly a, a terrorist group, uh, sort of added uh, an element of, of tension uh, to the negotiations. Negotiations uh, aren't really for um, the weak of heart. You've got to be patient. In fact, uh, patience isn't just a virtue. It becomes a tactical advantage. The North Koreans in particular were, were masters at delaying things and dragging them out, hoping that our impatience would lead us to negotiate with ourselves and continuing to put uh, new proposals on the table when they weren't adequately responding to the ones we already had. If you have some experience in negotiating, you need to recognize that. Uh, you also need to know when to leave the table. Sometimes you should be impatient and you never know uh, what the other side is going to say until you do leave the table. It's sort of an axiom. You never know what the bottom line is until you walk away. There's a time in negotiations where it's to your advantage to lose your temper. Uh, if you do it too often, people just tune you out. But if you are known for being calm and, and patient, then when you lose your temper, it really does make a big impression. And it actually happened once in the negotiations with the Koreans. And I walked out and um, I uh, just walked the streets of New York for about two or three hours. And by the time I got back, uh, people were so worried that uh, I, had I wasn't going to return at all that uh, they had decided to work out an issue on their own that was really a sticking point. The goal of every negotiation, I would argue, is not to reach an agreement. The goal of a negotiation is to educate and explain your position to the other side and then to explore together whether you can find some mutual common ground. And sometimes you can, and sometimes you can't. And if you can't, that doesn't necessarily mean that the negotiation is a failure. It just means that for other reasons, you were unable to reach an agreement and go forward. And perhaps you need to come back in six months or a year and try it again. Or perhaps you need to change the terms of the negotiation so that you can reach agreement on other points. But, but again, you have to understand, at least in my experience, you're sitting down with people who aren't angels. Okay, you are making peace with your enemies, not with your friends. But once you decide that it is in the national interest to go forward, that there may be some net gain for the country by trying to reach an agreement, then you have to swallow whatever reservations you might have about the horrific things that these people may have done in their past.